So Superman is currently fighting for the fate of the entire Earth. Blocked off from any help or other heroes, he is pushed to his limits against all kinds of tests to save not only Metropolis, but the planet itself. And so after completing his second out of third trial, we see Superman remain victorious, albeit a little beat up and tired. His first trial and test was beating up a giant cosmic alien and saving Metropolis from a helicarrier crashing down. His second test was being depowered by Red Sun solar batteries and racing to save the lost city of Condor. And his third is going to be his most challenging yet. But because he has remained victorious so far, he has time to rest as he goes into a cell on the alien ship to heal up and get ready for his most challenging one yet. Because he has essentially been kidnapped or captured by an alien empire, an empire that has come to Earth's doorstep seeking to control it and take it over. But of course this alien empire has a more gladiator way of dealing with things, so they decided that Earth gets one champion. And if this champion succeeds, Earth will be left alone. And if he fails, well, they get to control and take over Earth. And Superman isn't alone as he did bring Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen up on the ship with him. And because of this, Lois Lane, acting proactively, decides to go and talk with this champion meant to destroy and murder Superman, the final challenge. A being that goes by the name Hawks Orr. And this isn't just some ordinary alien or creature, no, this is a Daxamite. And DC Daxamites are an alternate or subspecies of Kryptonians. Meaning while yes, they do have some slight differences, as instead of kryptonite, daxamites are, are lethally vulnerable to lead instead. But they are just as tough, strong, fast, durable as any other kryptonian, including Superman. But Lois Lane came to his cell to try and talk the daxamite out of it, telling him that Superman is not his enemy. If anything, it's this alien empire forcing them to fight. So she tries to convince him to try and resist, fight with Clark to take over and topple this empire. But this Daxmite being not only stuck in his ways, but enjoying the situation that he has now, getting to beat different people to death, calls out to Lois Lane telling her, not only will he defeat Superman, but he claims he is going to kill him, saying that he will demolish Earth's champion. So go on, don whatever garb your people mourn in, because you'll have much need of it very soon. Moving over to a room and a cell on the opposite end, we see the champion in question, Superman, who has seen better days, as he does look a little beat up and bruised. But what happens here is one of my favorite parts throughout this issue in comic. Superman calls for the Garathian leader Grunhar, and as he arrives in his room, Superman says he is giving Grunhar a chance one last chance, a chance to surrender. And of course, Grunhar, the Garathian, being confused, you can barely stand while I have an armada. In which we see Superman here become absolutely intimidating because even though Superman is usually depicted and thought to be a boy scout, the embodiment of hope, justice, and resilience, there are still times when he has this little edge to him, intimidating aura, if you will, especially at times like these where important things are at stake, his determination is like none other, as he says nothing more than one last chance. And this here makes Grunhard pause because the comic goes on to say, for a moment, for perhaps the first time in his dictatorial life, Grunhar has doubts. This one man, Superman, hurt down and almost defeated, has instilled the fear inside of Grunhar's heart. And so without saying anything more, Grunhar then leaves out of Superman's room. And with that little interaction over, we can see the Garathians bring out two new people. People that, well, frankly, will become pretty useless and non-important later on, but they are supposed to be other backup for Superman. But they get intimidated by the raw power that Superman in the Daxamite We'll be showing off later on, so they are pretty useless. Speaking of the Daxamite, it is almost time, time for their battle, as Superman and his two new companions, a Thanagarian and another being that kind of looks like what you would get if you mix Darkseid and Thanos together. But we then see the trio teleported to the fighting arena as it is on, it is now or never, do or die. And after refusing to grab and use a weapon and the advice of the Thanagarian to his side, they then get introduced to the Daxamite that is also teleported too. With the comic going on to hype him up, calling him the undefeated master of the combat floor, terror of a thousand worlds, the merciless beast, Hux or the undefeated. And sheesh, this guy looks absolutely crazy, as he wields some kind of lightning axe. And after exchanging a few words, the battle begins. The Daxamite rushes towards Superman, with the comic going on to say, Superman, who thinks at speeds we cannot even imagine, has only a millisecond to ask himself one question. Where are Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen? But that is all as just then, even for Superman, there is no time for thought. As the Daxamite slams down on Superman with the force of two meteors, and a crashing sound that can be heard halfway across the country down below. As after stopping and grabbing his downward axe strike, Superman starts to use his other versatile abilities such as his heat vision to try and throw the Daxamite off. But because Superman is in a weakened state, it is not really effective as the Daxamite backhands him and backhands him hard, sending him flying away. In the way that this arena works, the only way you can lose, if you are knocked out of bounds or leave 
out of bounds willingly. And so with an attack that crazy, he crashes through the floor, setting up dust everywhere and everybody believing he went out of the arena space, causing him to lose and the earth as a byproduct, being free reigns for the empire to take over. And of course, Grunhart and the other Grathians are celebrating thinking they have won. But little do they know that Superman does not go down that easy, as he barely manages to stay inside of the arena, one arm holding him in. And so with that, the fight is still on, the fight continues. With the Daxamite being as ruthless as he is, using his spear axe like weapon, to slam it down into Superman's hand, causing Superman even more immense pain and weakening him even further. But he is able to get him off by using an even stronger blast of his heat vision. And with Superman back in, they start their battle once more, and they go hard against each other. These two remarkable beings start to pummel each other like with the force of shifting continental plates each blow more brutal, more primal than the last. To the audience watching and around the world down below, it is like watching the cosmic upheaval of the creation of a new star. It is the sound of war condensed into the fist of only two men. But while this monumental battle is going on, we then cut over to see where Jimmy Olsen and Lois Lane actually are, as they are on the ship just a different part. As you see, while all the guards are watching the fight, they are able to slip into the trophy room, where they find the lost city of Condor, a shrunken down Kryptonian city housing, well, Kryptonians. And so in a desperate plan, if Superman is on a back foot losing, they plan to open and let the Kryptonians fly free. And cutting back over to the actual battle, we see a reality where that might happen because Superman, unfortunately, just couldn't keep up. He is too weakened, too out of it. He is on his knees hurt, but never yielding. But we do see a interesting revelation happen here as there are traces of unfair and foul play. As we see pieces of kryptonite on the battlefield and held by the Daxamite, meaning every blow that Superman took from the Daxamite hurt him along with him getting weaker from the kryptonite in his vicinity. Because as we go on to know, Grunhar and the other Garathians made the Daxamite hold it, just showing you the level of fear that Superman put into Grunhar the leader's heart earlier, making him even have to doubt his chances of winning and having to cheat almost. But the Daxamite, wanting a almost fair battle in an honorable one, he tosses the kryptonite away, saying he wasn't made for deceit. If he is going to kill Superman, Earth's champion, it is going to be by his fist and his fist only. But with the kryptonite now off the battlefield, we see Superman get almost a second win, if you will, immediately rushing up, double fisting, uppercutting the Daxamite with insane power using his unrelenting strength and speed to continue to pummel the Daxamite in the face, knocking him back, telling him that the reason he is going to lose is because he is giving up, adopted their ways, while Superman still has so much to fight for. And while these attacks and strikes do connect and hurt the Daxamite, he is far from being defeated in and out. Unfortunately for the Daxamite though, Superman being as smart as he is strong, played the game to its rules. Because as he was fighting, he was knocking him back and eventually got him past the borders and out of the arena out of bounds, and in that remarkable moment, a man raised on a backwater planet suddenly became the champion in the most favored sports star of a thousand worlds, winning this third and final challenge and beating this empire's champion. And with the battle finally over, we see Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen finally come out. And as they are out, they explain to Superman the desperate plan that they have come up with to free the other Kryptonians. But it's just then that Superman turns his attention to Grunhar, specifically to the fact that he cheated, and what the reactions would be to all the other Alliance worlds to know that the game, the arena, is fixed, it's rigged. And of course, with Grunhar not taking kindly to this, telling and threatening Superman that he is going to destroy him, Superman of course still has a backup plan, telling him that no, I don't think so. Not unless he would like to fight 30,000 fully powered Kryptonians. And of course, with Superman's threat being the bigger one and more powerful one, Grunhard gives in and surrenders, being pulled away by the other drones to be imprisoned inside of his own empire. So Superman not only saving the earth this time, he saved countless other worlds that were being imprisoned and gone through the same type of trials from the Garathians. And as I have said before, Superman is the embodiment of hope, justice, and resilience. We even see him go to his former enemy, the Daxamite, helping him up. Because technically the Daxamite was another prisoner in all of this, another being whose world was conquered and forced to be in here. Just along the way, he has given up and adopted their ways and willingly fought. And now moving back over to Earth, we then pick up on a basketball court where this entire story began. But instead of it being Clark Kent, it is Superman. As a comic goes on to narrate, saying he's hurt, exhausted, but he is happy and content. He feels like he has made both of his parents proud, and it was destiny for him to emerge victorious. After all, he has so much to fight for. As this comic and video comes to a close. So yeah, that was a three-part miniseries challenge from the stars. 
What did you guys think about it? Me personally, I really enjoyed that earlier Superman and earlier adventure in his saga and one that left him so vulnerable. And yes, showed that Superman isn't just his incredible power, but his resilience and never giving up attitude, which eventually in the end did win him the fight and the safety of the entire earth. But of course, if you've enjoyed this video, leave a like or subscribe if you like this type of content and want to see more. As always, this is the Hero Informer and thank you for watching.